The Gentle Giant name has become a part of my personality. And Rowan is coming through. I am six foot five and I do have size 14 feet. But I think it also comes back to that saying where when you lift someone up and stand on their shoulders, you look like giants. It is about just trying to lift up everyone around me. My name is Rowan Crothers. I have been swimming on the Australian Paralympic swim team since 2013. I am a double Paralympic gold medalist and a world champion and a world record holder. Outside of that, I've spent a very long time pursuing esports. Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! That you can say that I have an invisible disability, but you can't actually see my disability if you take a photograph. I was born at 25 weeks gestation. Due to a large assortment of complications, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a kind of brain injury that impairs fine motor skills and coordination and muscle tone, mostly through my legs, but being a brain injury, it impairs my entire body. Walking was an extreme challenge when I was younger, learning how to lead with my heel, learning how to use visual feedback by watching my legs and looking at the floor in front of me to learn how to be more stable. It was really great training to start my future athletic career, but it still does impact me in a number of significant ways in life. Hey, <laughs> Is this your first day ever at big school? It's school day for me and Heather. When I was younger, I was bullied quite ruthlessly. I would get like punched or kicked or pushed down the stairs and the school would turn a blind eye to it. A lot of it because of the people around me that just saw this really clumsy kid and didn't look past my disability or lack of coordination. It got to the point where I started skipping school to hide in the toilets because I was so ashamed of my disability and so ashamed of being referred to as one of the other more disabled kids. So I didn't feel like I had any outlets where I could prove myself to be successful or to find friends. So for a very long time when I was younger, I would stay at home and play video games. Although I was absolutely terrible at it. And I just kept trying to get better and better because it's something I could do with regular people. And if I can develop these things, regardless of physical ability and coordination, I can kick it with the big boys. So whilst I was swimming quite competitively by the time I was in high school, I was spending a lot of my free time playing these games because it was something that was inclusive. And then it got to the point where, although I was really bad at these games at the start because I didn't have good control of my hands, all of a sudden no one wants to race Rowan anymore because he's just wiping the floor with everybody at home. I could not stand swimming when I first started it. I'd move backwards more than I would forwards. I'd kick my legs into each other, which I still do now. But it was more about learning how to control my body. I knew that I had to keep doing it for my disability. And I remember in 2008, I was channel flicking on TV in the school holidays and the Beijing Paralympics were on TV. And I saw Peter Leake, win a gold medal in the 200 meters individual medley SM8. And Peter Leake, he has cerebral palsy. I said, well, this is something that I could do someday. And then I wanted to start working a lot harder to prove myself. All of a sudden we started to see some quite drastic improvements. About two months before the trials for the Paralympic Games in Tokyo last year, I had to go through 
COVID lockdown quarantine for two weeks. That was very difficult to deal with. You can't swim in a hotel room. So when I got out of that hotel room, I got back into training, but I felt like because I'd already hit my qualifying times previously this season, that I could just coast through. I'd be right and I'd get on the team. So I raced at trials. And I swam 0.06 seconds off of the qualifying time. And that broke me. I realized after that moment that there were more things that I could have done. I recognized so many things I could have improved on. And when I was given a second chance and selected for the Paralympic team, it was an opportunity to really lift myself above and put those things into action. For the Australian who's looking ahead of world record pace here. Yeah. And it's anybody for the top four. Don't discount Melo as well. Who's going to touch first? It's Crothers ahead of Kripak with Felipe Melo. And Crothers can celebrate. Champion of the men's 50 meter freestyle S10. It's his first Paralympic medal. Yeah. At the last world championships. And without those setbacks, I don't think I would have been anywhere near as successful. I don't think I would have won the Paralympic gold medals that I did. I still struggle to put into words just how special it is to me to say to little Rowan at 10 years old that I achieved that dream. After the Tokyo Paralympics, I realized that the impact that little old Rowan could have on the community was massive. And I wanted to get back into gaming and into esports, not to be a professional player, but to promote the incredible messages of inclusion. When you're playing a video game, no one sees disability. They just see a username or an alias, and they see what you can do in the game. And it's unlike traditional sport, where although I have seen so much success in swimming, I'm still a Paralympic athlete. I'm still recognized as an athlete with a disability. Whereas in gaming and in esports, the disability is irrelevant. It's just everyone together trying to be the best they can be. To do that, I needed to build a new computer. Oris reached out and said, hey, let's work together and build what is absolutely my dream PC that not only captures the swimming pool that I love and I train in day in, day out and compete in all over the world, but it has this really incredible easy latch system that makes it so much easier to be able to put in and take out a graphics card. It's something that is really difficult for people with poor dexterity and coordination to be able to do. That enables me to be able to be a positive role model and an influence towards people in the gaming community and the wider world. I've met people through gaming that are now some of my closest friends in the entire world and they don't care that I have a disability. They care about the fact that I can play the games well. Nice. Nice. But also that I am a good person. I love working with Aorus because they also truly care about making the world and making the industry a better place for all people and to help out the 10 or 11 year old Romans that are out there in the world. The potential that gaming has to be not just a competitive platform for people with disabilities, but to be a community for people with disability to come together and find new friends because that's what makes life so beautiful. And I really hope that in the future, more brands within the tech industry can learn to have a conversation around this and talk about how can we make PC building and getting into gaming as easy as possible for all people, regardless of disability. See you tomorrow, man. I didn't feel like I had a community before I found swimming. And I feel like now that esports and gaming is becoming so much more accepted within culture, that there's other young kids with disabilities out there that are discovering gaming and finding their own communities and finding their own friends in the digital space. You're all in the pool or you're all in the server and you're all just coming together, enjoying something that you love.
and you have the potential, regardless of what you think you are or what you think you can do, to make such a massive difference in so many people's lives.